Hello and welcome. Today's exciting episode is me trying to make this tweed jacket, which I do eventually do, but gosh, <laughs> I take a few wrong turns. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So normally when I make my tweed jackets, I cut out the structural layer, this net that sort of goes behind the tweed so the tweed doesn't sag. I cut out this and the tweed at the same time. But the tweed has a very distinctive pattern. So I'm going to do this the way that Chanel does their hot couture tweed jackets. I'm going to make the shell, the structural shell of the torso, and then I'm going to try and drape the tweed over the top, which will be fun because I don't use anywhere near as much tweed as they do. So anyway, what I'm going to do is these three bits on the right are the back, the three, and the other bits on the left are the front, and I've pinned the front left together, the front right together, and the three bits for the back together. I'm going to sew these sections, individual sections together, then I'm going to sew the shoulder, them all together at the shoulder stripes. So I did that and then I was going to lay them on the tweed, but I didn't buy enough tweed. So I'm going to have to unpick the shoulder bits and just lay out the three bits. So the full back, the full left front, the full right front. So here I have the tweed laid out on my workbench and that is the full back piece so it's all three bits sewn together and obviously um, the shoulder blades they have a bit of a bump out and on the front left and the front right each um, breast bit has a bit of a bump as well I'm a small cup size so it's not that much but what you do is you sort of because tweed is it's loosely woven, so as long as you pin carefully all the layers together, you can sort of get it right. So I pinned the fronts and the backs together, and I've just put them over to the side, and I'm going to do the sleeves first because it's easier. So now once you pin the layers together, you have to stitch them, hand stitch them together. So I'm just using a beige thread to do that. And you just do every few inches, you do a hand, hand stitched row. And I'm not sure if you can see them because it's beige thread. I used beige thread and black netting so that you would be able to see it, but I really don't think it's very clear at all. Oh my goodness, this has just been such a disaster. Anyway, the tweed layer is stitched to the backing net layer. And um, I ran out of black, so the underarms are pink. So, yeah, I did all of the cutting out, all of the stitching, and now they're pinned together, so I have to machine sew them. I can't remember where I put my other pins, so I'm just going to do the arms first, then use all the pins to do the other side. So I um, pinned them together, then I machine sewed this, the under sleeve to the outer sleeve so each of the sleeves are one whole sleeve now now all I have to do is pin back the seam allowance on each sleeve and then hand stitch those down as well so here we go I hand stitch them down and then the next thing once you've done that I think I only did one and yeah so then I have to do the other one but um, I really like this pink. I think I'm going to buy more of it. I have to use up the black that I've got. But yeah, next time I buy um, this net that I use for the structural layer, I think I'm going to go for the pink. It looks so much nicer on the camera. Anyway, when I finally finish sti hand stitching down all the seam allowances, then you have to carefully pull through your sleeve and yeah, you just have to make sure that you don't wreck the armhole when you're pulling it through. It's really delicate. And so just take your time when you do it. Okay, so both sleeves are done now. So I'll put them off to the side and I will do the fronts and the back. So yeah, these again, they took forever. All you have to do is, because they're pinned, to the structural layer is pinned to the... T tweed it's kind of like draping it over the shell of the of the structural layer the the three bits that I sewed together 
So once I'd hand stitched them together, then I pinned them together, the two fronts and the back, and I sewed them together at the sides and the shoulders. And then once I'd sewed them together, I had to, again, pin back the seam allowance, including the seam allowances at the shoulders, and then hand stitch them down. So all of that is done now. And so the whole of the torso or bodice of the jacket is made, including the front two panels of the lining. And here we go. So now I just have to reinforce the shoulders. I just cut out a couple of layers of these, of that netting that I use for the structural layer, um, pinned them in place on the mannequin so that they have, they keep the curve then hand stitch them into place with four rows of hand stitching it doesn't have to look fabulous it just has to keep them in place and now it is time to put the sleeves on but I was so hungry I either I just knew I either had to stop for dinner or or I would just mess up these sleeves. So I sort of, I was like, okay, I won't do the sleeves. I'll do the neckline first. So I um, machine sewed the neckline and then I cut down the excess of the seam allowance. And so here it is. This is me. I've machine sewed. This is the, the machine sewing line is where the um, neckline is going to be. Then I cut down the seam allowance and I clip the curves and then I folded back the excess and then I just hand stitched that into place because I'm going to bead the outside. It's easier to make the outer jacket as a jacket and then bead it and then make the lining as a separate jacket and then hand stitch the two of them together. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the neckline is finished now and all I have to do is add the sleeves, but I'm gonna go and have dinner because I was just, yeah, my blood sugar levels were very low. I was like, oh, I, if I do the sleeves now, I will totally mess them up because you need to sort of concentrate when you do the sleeves. So yeah, at this point I was like, do I even have time to have dinner and do the sleeves? So that's why I made sure I took um, pictures from all around. I was like, I don't think I'm going to have time to finish this, but... I sort of scoffed on my dinner, then went back and did the sleeves really. <laughs> and yeah, it's fine. But that's why there's so much of this footage because I was not sure I was going to have time to do it. As you can tell from the footage, it was late at night at this point. I was like, oh. So yeah, I pinned the sleeves in and then I machine sewed them in. And then this is a different jacket. You just push up the seam allowance. So you cut down the third under the arm. You cut down that seam allowance by half, just by half. The, the other two thirds of the seam allowance, like the bit that goes over the shoulder, you just leave that and you push it up into the sleeve and then you pin it there. And it actually holds, helps the um, shoulder keep its shape and then you stitch it from the outside and then you turn it on the inside and you stitch it again from the inside and here we go and I also just pinned up the hem I have to leave it down until after it's beaded so that I can cover all the threads but I've just pinned it up instead of stitching it into place so that you can see what it's going to look like and this is the jacket and the next step is that I have to do the beading. And once all the beading is done, I will make the lining. But yeah, here it is. I have had this tweed for years and years. I think I might have bought it in 2020 or maybe even before the pandemic. I've just had it for so long. I can't quite be believe it's done. I did the full front panels on this one. The last jacket I did was the orange beaded one and I made the front panels sort of half width on that one, the center front panels, so they don't quite meet in the middle. And I think I actually like this better. It it sort of suits because I have such small shoulders. I think this sort of elongates the jacket and makes me look like I have a longer torso and I look like an adult rather than a tiny little boxy square child so yeah I think I'll um yeah the next tweed jacket I do I think I'll do those half 
with front centre panels. But I, I quite like the back with like, so it does, the structural layer has three panels. So it has room for your shoulder blades and in the front it has room for the bust. But it's also because I draped the, sort of pinned the structural layer to the outer one, um, it's just really nice and smooth. I really like it. It took a long time. <laughs> like it's very dark outside and it's not the greatest footage. So I'll have to let, have a lot more lead time to do all the photographs. But this draping way does produce really good results. I mean, the pattern matching is amazing. And I only had one meter of this, which is basically one yard. But I do think it would look nicer if I had um, the sort of open front, so the smaller centre panels. And, yeah, the next step I'm going to do is to bead it, but not with normal beads. I think I'm going to do the bow beads and use them all on this. So, yeah, hours of fun, hours and hours. It takes so long to bead. But then you get this unique jacket that no one else in the world has. So, I don't know, I think it's worth it. Anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't make the mistakes I made. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes. And um, I'm so glad I stopped and ate dinner before I did those sleeves because I would have just messed them up and I would have been so disappointed with myself. But yeah, so now I have to go do some beading of bows, which will be interesting. They look very fragile and difficult to work with. I haven't worked with bow beads before. So wish me luck and happy sewing.